Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's have a look at some of these coins. We're going to have a look at obviously Bitcoin, Ethereum, and we're going to focus on SXP as well actually because it's it's something that I'm, I'm feeling very very strongly about at the moment actually. Um, so this is the Bitcoin dominance chart first of all. So you can see that we, we bounced yet again from roughly around that trend line. I mean we were breaking down below it and um, technically closed below it. A bit of a spinning top. The chart is a chart, but it's never going to be as clear as a price action chart, but it does offer some clues as to what I believe is going to happen, which is that altcoins are likely, likely to, ha to, to continue with their moves. All right? So when it comes to buying dips, I suppose the dips should still be bought within altcoins, right? This uh, trend line here is where we have been hedging into Bitcoin quite successfully over the past one, two, three, four, uh, and then uh, two Fridays in a row. Here, a great hedge. Here, another great hedge. The thing we're looking at here though, and again, you know, it is a chart and it the, the does have um, clues as to what's going on, uh, is that we are having a, a, a a death cross basically and death cross um, just just about to kick in over the next few days it's not a signal in itself but it is a sign that this continued um, downtrend for the Bitcoin dominance chart is is likely to continue uh, you know where's it going to continue to well I mean once we bro break down beneath this if we break down beneath this then we basically look at zones um, and the zones are going to be around these areas here uh, as you can see we found supports uh, around these all the uh, to be honest with you it's all the way down to that little box uh, that that little white white area I suppose there so um, between 58 to as low as uh, 57 so it's not a great deal but it's it would mean a lot for altcoins so um, why do I think that dips are to be bought of altcoins well I mean we can see with Bitcoin basically it's still holding the general uh, strength of its trend you know a big move up and um, this is a buy the uh, th this is a buy the rumor sell the news the news wasn't really sold so the buy the rumor uh, and basically the news hasn't yet been sold we are still closing at the moment above this uh, level of what used to be resistance and now appears to be support, about 46,000, 46,500. So that's Bitcoin in a nutshell. Everything about the chart appears to be pretty good. Let's just check the weekly. Um, every aspect of this is, is still pretty good. Uh, it can easily come down though, I can tell you. It can easily come down so long as this um, this uh, money flow index is, uh, is kept then I, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Uh, in fact, I'd, I'd say that that would be the, the low of Bitcoin if it comes into this level. And that would be where we, we hedge a bit stronger um, from the rotation from altcoins into Bitcoin. I think that's basically this trend line. On the money flow index is, is where that would be done. So when we're talking about altcoins, we um, one of the main things that I've been saying is that we look at uh, obviously the Bitcoin dominance chart, which looks like it has another run left in it. Um, definitely, maybe even a really big run. You know, maybe the alt season is only halfway through. Um, it all depends on that trend line breaking down. But also, it also depends on the health of Ethereum. Now, Ethereum also the chart looks relatively strong still. So we always have plenty of time to uh, to pick up some Ethereum. It's always given us that opportunity. Um, it's slow and steady. So a big move up here and then essentially riding the center of the Bollinger Band. Another big move up here and I think now what it's doing is going to give us a, a, a few more opportunities to get in there before it makes this move to the inevitable $2,000 zone. The two things that I'll be looking for here um, to suggest any kind of serious upset uh, is this <laughs> it's uh, it's is at a very high read at the moment in all fairness and it doesn't mean that it's bearish people look at these crosses and go ah i got to get out the macd's just crossed Blah! but really um that's that's, that's fine uh, what you'll get here is uh, likely a, a bit of a redistribution area look the zero points all the way down here guys so uh, it, it's really nothing to be concerned about the macd is a very very high high read in fact it's the highest read it's been since its last all time high really so let's not get too um excited or scared that the macd is as cross negative it's not the end of the world the end of the world will be if this Chiku span touches price action or we get this blue touch this red here conversion baseline cross on the Ichimoku cloud that would suggest that the trend has come to an end um, but it doesn't also it also doesn't mean that the end um, is, uh, is is going to end up in like a massive massive retracement it just means that this continued uptrend that we've had all the way from well where was the cross about around here has come to an end and we'll be looking for a new trend to begin similar to what we see on Bitcoin when um, uh, Bitcoin on, on the daily had its trend end 
and uh, we were we were like okay okay we had a negative cross around here so the trend has potentially ended so where does the next trend begin when we make another up cross here so the trend began around here so a new uptrend has begun for Bitcoin and uh, the original trend for Ethereum hasn't ended so if this trend hasn't ended and this um, chart looks you know technically bearish uh, then what we need to do is focus on some of these smaller caps um, and it isn't that small really but SXP for instance um, that have had a giant retracement if we if we are putting our faith in the altcoin market based on the Bitcoin dominance chart and on Ethereum then we ought to put our faith in some of these mid to low caps also because they're the ones who move the most so when buying dips it's nice to hedge into some of these I suppose um, if our, you know if if our theory is correct so this one didn't have the same kind of positive Ichimoku cloud cross, it didn't have that. So we don't really look at this as much. We can look at it all the same and again, way, way away from price action. Uh, also so is the blue and the red um, conversion baseline, very far away from each other. And where did we come down to test? Basically this zone, the center of the Bollinger Band and also this, this uh, what used to be a resistance zone You know that, that corresponds to uh, these um, resistances back here. Um, so yeah, tested as support, that's fine. In my opinion, it's good to go. Also look what's happening here. We're getting a golden cross emerge um, for the very first time on this chart because it's never had a 200 exponential. It's actually a very young chart. So it's just getting its very first golden cross and usually what would happen is once one of these has, has, has happened uh, there would be a dump down into it. Now because we've rallied so hard and fast the, the dump has been pretty significant so far and I'm not saying it can't go down further. It could come down to that level. It could. It doesn't mean that that is the end. It means that this is the beginning. I suppose you could look at it like that. This is potentially the beginning. Most of the time what we see and we, we talk about this all the time on my on my um, Patreon live streams we see it over and over and over again Golden Cross forms there's a rally then there's a dump down into it to wax and liquidate all those people that have got too excited because they saw the cross and the cross to them means that that's a signal in itself it's never a signal it's a sign of an uptrend beginning and should hopefully continue it's not the sign that it's not a signal in itself it's, it's a good thing we want these sort of things we want these golden crosses but the cross itself is often misplaced uh, as uh, some form of get it off uh, some form of ultimate buying opportunity which in all fairness it it does become one of those but the cross itself isn't all right the cross itself is just one of many crosses that takes place uh, takes place with um, moving averages moving averages they cross over each other all the time uh, and all they do is they, they, it shows us that the trend is strengthening um, but it doesn't mean that that's a, a sign that, or a signal to play so I bought the SXP dip, I staggered my orders and then my last order was filled at $1.90 um, so just above I suppose this, this, this box area so I mean that, that's bounced relatively well from my last buy order uh, already it's 12% up I believe that this uh, this has got a long way to go still and to see a retracement of this size is, is just an opportunity for me to be honest just an opportunity anyway I'm not concerned over this uh, this pullback uh, across the board I'm not concerned of it whatsoever Bitcoin still remains okay Ethereum still remains okay and the Bitcoin dominance actually looks pretty bearish which is good for altcoins so in that sense I'll pick up the ones that have bled the most and the ones that I've got the biggest expectations for that would be things like SXP, Ocean, and uh, a handful of others. Can't remember exactly what they are. There, there, there's a number of other dips that I've been buying. Anyway, I'll leave it with you there. There's no need to go on any further about it. Personally, I'm not too concerned over the market right now. Um, it's very early in this in this dumpage, and this and the fact that it's dumped so significantly, especially with this token, um, only fills me with uh, with 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 joy. Um, because it's given us that opportunity to reclaim not just you know what what's what's been taken away, uh, but also hold for a longer position to take us up to, in my opinion, about three dollars forty would be the next area of significance um, around about these levels. Anyway, I think over time SXP is actually going to do very very well, uh, and people are probably getting a little afraid of it because they remember what happened here. Do you know what happened here? FOMO happened here. Do you know what's happening here? A trend. This is FOMO. This is a trend. FOMO, trend. 
FOMO trend. Very different situation, and I can understand why people get scared, especially when they see something like this. I mean, let's measure this out from the top to all the way down to there. Ooh, that was a 37, almost 38% retracement. So I can understand the fear that, uh, that that goes through people because they look at this and they can't tell the difference uh, between the what's actually happened. This is FOMO. This is a trend. FOMO trend. FOMO trend. Very different. Like if we look at uh, Bitcoin, I suppose. We'll look at the difference here. FOMO trend. FOMO trend. FOMO trend. All right, it's different. It's just different. Okay. So um, obviously, I can always be wrong, and I've been wrong in the past. I'm wrong all the time. Uh, but this, in my opinion, is is how I'm deciding to play these. We've got a healthy Ethereum, a relatively healthy Bitcoin for now. We've got an unhealthy the Bitcoin dominance chart. And we've got a giant dump uh, down into an incoming golden cross in what would appear to be a very strong trend. So I'll leave it with you there, but thank you for watching. I hope you have a nice day. Join my Telegram and also um, live streams Tuesdays, Fridays um, for Patreon users. £7.50, absolute bargain. Bring me your charts. I'll answer your questions. Hope you have a nice day. Take it easy.